the role that it has played. Um, uh, since I'm not Rwandan, I don't have a horse in the race in Rwanda. Uh, it's up to the Rwandan people to decide their own future. Uh, however, I believe that it's my obligation as an American citizen uh, to try and play some role uh, in reducing the um, involvement of the U.S. in manipulating uh, the uh, uh, African uh, people. Um, I think what we're beginning to see is a clear policy of U.S. military intervention in Africa. Uh, the establishment of AFRICOM is a uh, clear uh, indication of uh, a uh, plan for military involvement in Africa. While I was uh, in detention, I understand there was a uh, meeting of uh, uh, AFRICOM in Kigali, uh, which is not surprising because there was uh, uh, and has been uh, an ongoing relationship between the Pentagon and uh, the uh, uh, first the uh, Ugandan military and then the RPF uh, as early as uh, uh, 1988 uh, and all through the war from 1990 up through 1994. Uh, also, uh, this uh, election, of course, has uh, not an election that is really a contest because there never has been uh, this sort of infrastructure that exists uh, in countries uh, where a democratic contest can take place. And uh, it's also true that the story that there was a long planned genocide in Rwanda is so well uh, uh, situated and so well established uh, that many people in Rwanda uh, are so fearful of a change in government uh, that uh, the terror and the fear that exists um, uh, I felt and uh, witnessed myself uh, so that the prospect of a change in government uh, uh, seems, uh, uh, seems uh, beyond, uh, beyond uh, consideration. Uh, the, uh, as you know also that I was charged with the crime of genocide denial uh, and so I think it, it's probably worth at least mentioning how it is I came to be an enemy of the state in Rwanda so that certainly wasn't my intention. First of all, I've never made any public statements in Rwanda at all. Uh, the crimes that I, were charged with, that I was charged with had to do with my uh, writing things and saying things uh, at the ICDR, at the Rwanda Tribunal, and at my office in Minnesota. Um, uh, my uh, crimes resulted from my being able to use the disclosure principles at the ICTR uh, to be able to access United Nations files that had, uh, except for these disclosure principles, would have been held confidential for at least 50 years. Not only would you not have known about them, the tribunal would not have known about them, the Rwandan government would not have known about them, I would not have known about them. Um, because I was able to access those files and put them into evidence at the ICTR, my client, who is one of the top four military officers in the former government was found not guilty of any long-term planning or long-term conspiracy to kill civilians, much less Tutsi civilians. Now the story that's been told is that the military of the former government was engaged in a long-term conspiracy. Um, however, the um, uh, court, after seven years of the best evidence that the United Nations and the U.S. government and the Rwandan government and the forces of the prosecution could muster in a tribunal in which the chief prosecutor has written a book that was published in 2009 in which she explained that when she was uh, intent on prosecuting the side that won the war, the guys who are in power now, she was called to the State Department and told that she should drop her investigations and drop her prosecutions which included the assassination of the former president of Rwanda, Baryamana, and the assassination of Ntayamira of Burundi, who were killed on the same day, which is what touched off the Rwandan genocide. She was told she should drop those investigations by the US State Department, or she'd be removed from office. When she said, I work for the UN, not for the US, uh, she was told she would lose her job. This was in the uh, May of 2003. By October, she was out of office. Um, so the uh, victors uh, in that war 
with the assistance of the United States, uh, have never been prosecuted at the ICTR, although there is much evidence that both sides in the war committed crimes, not unlike the situation uh, in World War II, where one side, of course, used nuclear weapons, and the other side did not. Um, but of course, only one side was prosecuted. Now, that isn't to say that um, massive numbers of Tutsis were not killed. They were. Uh, however, uh, according to the evidence that the tribunal had, that that was not the result of long-term planning on the part of the military. Now, there may have been some other conspiracies that were going on in other parts of the country. It's entirely possible. Um, it may be that, the, um, uh, that people were killing people for ethnic reasons in parts of the country. That's possible. Uh, but was there a long-term plan on the, at the top levels of the military? According to the tribunal, there wasn't sufficient evidence of that. The problem is that by saying what I just said now, by pointing to the evidence at the tribunal, I now become an enemy of the Rwandan state. Now, the difficulty with that, of course, is that having that kind of dialogue becomes impossible in Rwanda, and that means that the idea of having a democratic discussion or an election in which government policy is honestly discussed becomes extremely difficult. And the ICTR is actually adding to that problem because it's requiring us to say that only one side committed crimes during what essentially was a four-year struggle for power in Rwanda. Um, I would also suggest that the characterizing this struggle, which was a four-year war, as Hutu and Tutsi uh, is not exactly correct because the um, question was more complex. Um, there are class questions involved, questions of who controls resources. And more importantly, I want to uh, quote to you uh, uh, an article by Herman Cohn, who was the uh, Assistant Secretary of State for Africa from uh, 1989 to 93 in the first uh, Bush administration. This appeared in the New York Times December 16, um, 2008. He said, the conflict in the Eastern Congo over the past 12 years has been as much a surrogate war between the Congo and neighboring Rwanda as an internal ethnic insurgency, as the United Nations report uh, underscored last week. Um, Having controlled the Kivu provinces for 12 years, Rwanda will not relinquish access to the resources that constitute a significant percentage of its gross national product. You see, what has happened is that the Rwandan military has gone from 6,000 troops when the RPF invaded in 1990 to 65,000 according to the latest uh, RPF report, or our CIA report, rather. Uh, Rwanda is now controlling an area of the Eastern Congo approximately 13 times the size of Rwanda itself, uh, uh, controlling approximately $250 million uh, in resource, um, uh, natural resources that are being uh, removed from the Congo uh, illegally, according to uh, United Nations uh, Security Council reports that were commissioned in 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2008, uh, financed with a military that's being financed by the United States. There have been approximately five to six million people killed in the Eastern Congo during this period of time, all at a time when the United States is claiming that a genocide is going on in Darfur, a blind eye is being turned to a conflict and deaths that are being produced. Uh, uh, 250,000 people were killed in Darfur in total. That number of people are being killed every six months in the Congo, and it doesn't get mentioned. Now, why is that occurring? Sudan has resource extraction arrangements with China. The resource extraction arrangements in the Eastern Congo are with Rwanda and Uganda, both of which are US-supported surrogates. And I would suggest to you that this election 
is an example of a, of a continuation of exactly the sorts of policies that the U.S. has had historically. Yesterday, there was a very uh, interesting uh, uh, report that uh, suggested that uh, because of recently uh, released confidential documents, uh, it's now clear that the CIA played a significant role in the assassination of Patrice Lumumba. And those documents had been con uh, confidential for 50 years, and they now have come out. Because of the um, uh, disclosure requirements of the, CT of the ICTR, which are, are a unique uh, opportunity in history to get at documents that would not have been released before, I was in the unique position of being able to get at these UN files. Those UN files are now in evidence at the ICTR, and they tell a story about what happened in Rwanda that would not have otherwise been released for 50 years, like these CIA documents were not released in 50 years. Uh, all of this is on my website, www.rwandadocumentsproject.net. They are also in evidence in the ICTR on the uh, Military One uh, uh, document site uh, in the, uh, at the ICTR.org website. Uh, and I invite you to, uh, 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 to uh, uh, investigate it yourself. Uh, and I know that the uh, ambassador from Rwanda is here. Uh, I'm happy to dialogue about this because uh, I'm sure that this is not information that's well known in Rwanda either. And one of the things I have to say is that while I was in detention, I was well treated by the people who were taking care of me. And I had an opportunity to talk with the uh, uh, upper level uh, uh, <coughs> people in the detention facilities and we talked about these things. And they were amazed to know that these, that these records actually existed. Uh, and that the evidence exists um, that uh, your president actually was responsible for assassinating President Habar Yamana and President Antar Yamira, and that he's been indicted in not only uh, uh, France, but also in Spain, and that the evidence exists in the ICTR exactly how that happened. Uh, not just uh, 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 Ruzbiza, uh, which um, who is recanted, but the actual testimony of people who were in Molindi, which is where the RPF headquarters were, exactly what happened when the news was received in Molindi about Habari Mana's assassination and how the orders were given uh, from Molindi to begin the assault uh, uh, to uh, finally seize power uh, on the night of April 6th. So uh, the evidence is there. It's now in the public record. Uh, in the long run, it's going to be understood. Uh, and uh, I just suggest that uh, people read it because it, it's not my opinion. And I got in trouble because <laughs> I found the documents. And I'm a little sorry that I did. But I, I'm happy to be able to talk about the documents. And uh, uh, I hope that, uh, that we can dialogue about them. But I'm very sorry that uh, my country uh, is uh, actually um, uh, uh, responsible for uh, much of the violence uh, and the uh, deaths in Central Africa. Thank you, Peter.